If you're a Star Wars fan, then stick around, because you're about to discover 15 amazing facts about Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back. Some snow scenes were filmed at a hotel. The scenes of Hoth were filmed in Norway, but the crew was there during one of the country's worst snowstorms it has ever had. However, to not waste the day, the director Irvin Kirshner set up the cameras in the hotel lobby and had Mark Hamill get in costume and run around the outside of the hotel to get the footage of him running away from the Wampa. Mark Hamill's force pull was made by having him throw the lightsaber into the snow, and then they reversed the footage in post-production. A similar trick was used when Vader snatches Han Solo's blaster. The director threw the blaster from off-screen to Harrison Ford, and they reversed that footage in post-production too. Carrie Fisher was too short to fit in the frame with Harrison Ford. Fisher was only 5'1", and Harrison Ford is 6'1", so in order to make the two look closer in height, Carrie Fisher often had to stand on a box while sharing the screen with Harrison Ford. Mark Hamill almost died while filming when large pieces of glass from above the set fell into the water tank just after he had gotten out of it. Some of the asteroids were made out of food. ILM had a lot of difficult visual effects shots to create, and among them was how they were going to make asteroids. George Lucas wasn't satisfied with several of their attempts, so out of frustration they started using shoes and potatoes as asteroids. The Emperor used to be a woman and a monkey. The original Emperor hologram was a 78-year-old woman named Marjorie Eaton, who was wearing heavy makeup and had chimpanzee eyes superimposed over her face, with Clive Revel providing the voice. However, in Return of the Jedi, the Emperor was played by Ian McDiarmid, and once the prequels were made, all releases of Empire Strikes Back used him for the hologram instead. The Dagobah scenes where R2-D2 is submerged in the mud pool were shot in George Lucas's unfinished swimming pool. Some of the crew were hidden under the water, and the sequence was shot by George Lucas himself. It took 10 hours to create the shot of the X-Wing being levitated out of the water, because parts of it kept falling off while filming. Obi-Wan was supposed to train Luke, but since the decision to kill off old Ben was made late into the production of A New Hope, this meant George Lucas had to create a new Jedi, which turned out to be Yoda. Lucas decided to make him a small alien so Yoda would be more interesting for the audience to watch, and he hired Muppet star Frank Oz to play the unassuming Jedi Master. However, George Lucas almost replaced Frank Oz because he was afraid the puppeteer would sound too much like Miss Piggy or Grover. But in the end, he stayed with the famous puppeteer, because he could embody Yoda's voice the best since he was the one there on set. Mark Hamill got bit by a snake. When Luke is cleaning out the X-Wing to prepare to leave Dagobah, he pulls out a snake from the spacecraft. Mark Hamill was told it was harmless, but ironically, he got bit on the take right after he was told that. The monster on the asteroid that almost swallowed the Millennium Falcon was actually a hand puppet, with the footage played back in fast motion. The Carbonite set was extremely hot, especially for the actors inside full bodysuits, and Carrie Fisher said the Chewbacca costume smelled the worst while filming. Han was originally supposed to say I love you too before being frozen in Carbonite, but Irvin Kirshner felt the line didn't fit his character. When Harrison Ford improvised by saying I know, the director knew that was the right line to use, but George Lucas was very upset about it, but Lucas respected Kirshner enough to leave the line in. The plot twist was under extreme secrecy before the movie was released in theaters. Only George Lucas and Irvin Kirshner knew the secret, and then Kirshner told Mark Hamill moments before filming the scene. To keep the secret hidden from everyone else on set, they had David Prowse, who was inside the Vader suit, say that Obi-Wan killed Luke's father. When James Earl Jones read the line in a recording session, he was so surprised that he denied it was real, and just suspected that Vader was lying to get inside Luke's head. What's your favorite Star Wars plot twist? Let me know down in the comments. To discover more facts about other GDPG-13 movies, click a video on the screen. And make sure to subscribe and click the bell to always be notified when I post a new video to keep learning more fun facts about your favorite films.